Fox Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Last night, the Tigers brought out the Thunder Sticks, hitting six home runs in game one in the series. Three of those home runs coming off the bat of Victor Martinez. We'll see if the Tigers bats remain hot tonight. We know the weather is as we welcome you to Kansas City. Game two in this four game series featuring the Tigers and the Kansas City Royals. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pepper, Ron Allen. We're glad to have you with us here for game two in this series. Tigers with 13 hits in the ball game last night. Rod, six of those home runs. They made this ballpark look awfully small last night. You know, we've been coming here for a long, long time, and the ball really doesn't travel as efficiently as it was traveling in last night's game. But give the Tigers some credit. I just love their approach lately against left-handed starters. Danny Duffy, the starter last night for the Kansas City Royals, was hot coming in, but they slowed him down. All right, Victor Martinez, boy, was he red hot last night. We mentioned the three home runs in the ball game. Victor being bothered by a sore knee recently, missed the Chicago series as a starter, but came back with vengeance last night. Well, the three days off in Chicago did him a well, a, a lot of good, obviously. And Brad's going to have an issue kind of watching victory the remainder of the season because the one thing you have to do Mario you have to keep him on the field because when he's on the field this is the kind of damage that he continues to do his balance throughout his swing whether batting right handed or left handed is some of the best in all of the big leagues for switch hitters there aren't that many switch hitters around the victor is one of the best of them second oldest player to hit three home runs in a one game the oldest is Ty Cobb I think we've all heard of him but it's going to be a challenge to keep Victor healthy because when he is playing this guy can really protect Miguel Cabrera in that lineup and we know what Miggy does when he gets good protection yeah he's awfully good now Michael Fulmer has been awfully good as well Fulmer right now putting himself in the conversation for rookie of the year when you look at some of the numbers he's starting to put up this season 28 and a third consecutive scoreless innings now for Fulmer among rookies in franchise history only John Hiller back in 1967 better at 28 and two-thirds so Fulmer has a chance to eclipse that mark here tonight. And really, Ryan, when you kind of look back at his five starts this year, he has been outstanding. You know, the one thing that I like about him, we watched the first four starts, and he was overthrowing in those starts. But when he went back out there against the Tampa Bay Rays, the time he had 11 strikeouts, that's where he found the changeup. That's where he found his confidence. That where, well, he found his dominance. Look at the numbers. 5-0 and oh with an ERA of 0 0.26 and a whip well under one with 30 strikeouts and only 10 walks. He'll either strike you out with a real good slider. He'll elevate the fastball. He's throwing lots of changeups to the righties and the lefties, and he's also getting tons of ground balls. The defenders say they love pitching behind Fulmer because he works very quickly, and he also throws that glove at you. He also has some deception in his delivery where he leads with his glove, and he kind of hides that baseball very well. He has not been hit very hard since coming to the big leagues. And hopefully he'll continue that here tonight. We'll take a time out. When we come back, we'll talk about two of the top catchers in the American League, James McCann of the Tigers, Sal Perez of the Royals. They'll be on display again tonight. We'll be back to KC.
Lorenzo Cain. McCann is throwing out 56% of would-be base stealers. And he'll be on display again here tonight in Kansas City. Mario and Rod back here at the ballpark as we get you ready for game two in the series. And really, Rod, not only McCann, but Salvador Perez, two of the top catchers in the league. We'll see them both in action again this evening. You know, not only two of the top catchers in the league, but two of the top defensive catchers in all of baseball. McCann, he's only been in the big leagues for a little over a year. He did not make one error last year, but his leadership skills behind the plate are very, very good. He makes all the plays, whether he's going down the line, picking up bunts, whether he's picking off over-aggressive base runners. And we know his skills throwing down two second base. But the other guy on the other side, Salvador Perez, who's already won three gold gloves. He's probably the best offensive catcher in the sport. He throws from one knee. He's very accurate. He's a very good leader. He's six feet five, and he has really good skills of handling the staff. Two really good catchers here on display at Kauffman Stadium the next three nights, and they're awfully fun to watch, partner. I love watching good defensive play, and these two guys, they basically hold their own. Look at that look by Salvador Perez. Don't run on me. Is what, that's that look right there, buddy. <laughs> they are as good as it gets. There is no question. Now, last night was fun to watch the Tigers. Of course, they won 10-4. to four. However, there was some bad news. J.D. Martinez, a hairline fracture in his right elbow on a play that he tried to make last night early in the game. You know, talk to Kevin Rand today, and he was telling me about the way that the field is constructed here and where his hand hit the wall right there had it been anywhere else it probably would not have broken uh, the the elbow he said just but by the way that the hand landed in that crease right there they had to put him on the disabled lease he's going to miss four to six weeks they're going to get another kid back here to get an opportunity to play that would be Stephen moya all right now uh, of course brad Osmus talked with lloyd mcclendon down at triple a said who should we bring up there was talk that it might be jacoby jones but they decided to go with moya i like moya i mean moya's done just about everything that he needs to do down in the minor leagues this guy's hitting 298 right now a couple of years ago he was really good in double a he took a step back last year but all indications that he's maturing. He went to Dominican Republic. He changed his swing in the offseason. He's playing much better baseball. Hopefully with the opportunity up here to play a few days in a row, we'll see some of that power that he has. All right, stay with us. Royals Tigers game two coming up after a short break. We'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Kristen Keith. Coming up with this one tonight, your Donald Ventura will make the start for the Royals. Things have gotten heated lately for Ventura. Hopefully we won't have some of the same here tonight. Tigers Royals game two coming up next.
Game two tonight in this four game series featuring the Tigers and the Royals. The Tigers starting lineup tonight looks like this. It is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers and for Brad Ausmus tonight. Ian Kinsler will lead it off. He'll play second base. Jose Iglesias a 14 game hitting streak playing short then Cabrera Victor Martinez the three homers last night. Castellanos and Upton also in the middle of the lineup. Moya McCann and Romine rounded out for the Tigers. And they are facing the right handed offerings of Jordano Ventura. Overall this year Ventura checks in with five wins and four losses. He's six feet inches about 185 pounds but he throws 99 miles an hour. He's got an outstanding curveball and a really good changeup. And the Tigers really have not had a lot of success against Ventura in his very brief major league career. And so Ventura will get things going here against Ian Kinsler on another warm evening tonight here in KC. The Tigers won the opener last night by a score of 10 to 4. And the right hander works home the first pitch of the ball game. It's a strike called on Ian Kinsler. In Ventura's last outing against Chicago White Sox, he pitched seven innings. He had 10 strikeouts in that contest and needed only 91 pitches to do so. Next one home slides outside, one ball and one strike. Already a curveball thrown by Ventura. He threw the curveball in his last outing more uh, than he previously had all year. Two balls and one strike. The Bernstein advantage brings us the scouting report. The pitcher batter matchup between Ventura and Kinsler, and Ian's got him for a 375 average. Here's the 2 1 offering. And it's a ball outside. 3 and 1 on Kinsler. Ventura, one of those guys you want to get early. And that first time through the batting order, the number's not good for Ventura against most teams in the big leagues. And they're hitting over 300 against him. There's a foul back out of play. Three and two the count. Ventura is a native of the Dominican Republic. He is 25 years old, just recently turned 25. His idol is Pedro Martinez. And Pedro in the Hall of Fame, of course, Pedro from Dominican Republic as well. 3 2 is hammered to right field, slicing away from Orlando, who runs it down in the sunlight. One gone. Well, you know, Orlando's in right field, but let's catch up with the rest of the Kansas City Royals defensive alignment. It is brought to you by Tim Hortons. Uh, in the outfield for them, they've got Kane as well as Orlando and Eibner in left field. They've got Escobar, Merrifield up the middle, Osmar, Cuthbert on the corners, and Salvador Perez, uh, their very talented all star catcher behind the plate. Here is Jose Iglesias to step in. Ned Yost, of course, won the World Series here last year with the Royals. First one to Iglesias, 98 miles an hour. His record here in Kansas City was only three games over 500. They must have had some lean years when he first took over. Yeah. Because last three years, they've been outstanding. World Series each of the last two seasons, winning it all last year. Another 98 mile an hour fastball that misses 2 and 0 on Iglesias. It's amazing that this young man can throw as hard as he can throw with it being as little as he is. As he goes 3 and 0 the one thing you notice about Ventura not a whole lot of wasted motion in his windup. He has really streamlined the windup like a lot of guys have done these days. One step a turn and the pitch it's a strike call. Three balls one strike. Iglesias a 14 gamer and another strike call three and two real nice easy 97 miles per hour coming out of the hand of Ventura look how easy that delivery is effortless get down ball another fly ball into right field the routine play there for Orlando who's been tested twice already. And there are two gone now. That'll bring up Miguel Cabrera in the Chevy Silverado most dependable player. Cabrera's on a lot of these lists, Rod, but when you start talking about these names, Ted Williams, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, come on, man. This is impressive. It's ridiculous. It really is. Uh, Miguel Cabrera has average four home, has 400 home runs already, 500 doubles, and his batting average is above 320, which all those guys also did in their careers. Special company he keeps with every every milestone that he gets to these days. Two out nobody on and a strike on Cabrera at 99 miles an hour and Miguel hit one of the six home runs the Tigers hit last night here at Kauffman Stadium. He hit a ball that was probably six inches off the plate out to right field last night. 
Little chopper back up the middle and into center field. A play by Merrifield. He got to it, but just couldn't quite get it out of the glove. That'll be a hit. Two out single for Cabrera. Merrifield upset with himself, thought he should have made that play. Had he made it, he might have had a chance to get McGill, but all of his mo momentum was carrying him toward left field. It had it would have to have been a very accurate throw. We'll bring up Victor Martinez. Miguel will take that infield single. I've yet to run across a player that would <laughs> give back any type of hit. You're absolutely <laughs> right. They are so hard to get in the big leagues. They weren't hard for this guy to get last night, though. Three long balls for Martinez last night. Twelve on the year now for Victor. And he'll take one that slides inside. One ball and no strikes. Three ninety eight on the road this year for Martinez. That is the best road record or road average I should say in the American League. Here's the one oh. It'll bounce in. Nice stop by Perez. In case you missed it last night, Victor Homer three times in a game for the second time of his career. Two right handed, one left handed. The only other time Victor did it was back in 2004 when he was wearing a Cleveland Indians uniform. Two balls, no strikes. Uh, Martinez, a two out single by Miguel Cabrera here in the first inning. Did you push that button over there? Can you do that? It twice, yeah. You just blame me on that one. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the two. Oh, it's the replay button right here. Two balls, one strike. Tigers with their win last night, two over 500 now, 34 and 32. Boy, you can see Merrifield playing way out there in right field, the second baseman. He knows that uh, Martinez did not run all that well. Here's a 2 1 pitch and a bouncing ball the other side of the infield. Escobar will fire to first base off balance and he gets Martinez. Inning over, no runs, one hit, and one man left. Tigers and Royals in game two. The Royals starting lineup brought to you by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Merrifield, Escobar, and Hosmer. Merrifield has been awfully good at home this year. Kane, Perez, Morales in the middle of their lineup. And then Paulo Orlando, Brad Eidner, and Chesler Cuthbert rounding it out. And they are facing the right handed offerings of Michael Fulmer presented tonight by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Well, another challenge for Michael Fulmer, and he's been uh, ready for every other challenge he's met in the big league. 7 and 1 with a power fastball, 97 98. Real good slide piece, really good changeup. He'll be trying to slow down this Royals team for the second consecutive night because they've got great numbers here in this ballpark. 
Whit Merrifield leads it off the right handed batting infielder for the Royals and he looks at a strike going one in the seven games that Merrifield has been in the leadoff spot he is batting 344 so he's been doing a really nice job getting things started for the Kansas City Royals the Royals with Al Moustakis and Gordon Gordon should be back in a couple of weeks but Moustakis is done for the year. If nothing else, Mario, with what Merrifield has been able to do up here in the kid Eibner in left field, even when Gordon and Moustakas do come back, they know they have more balance in their lineup with these two right-handed batters. Kansas that City's is. always been a very left-handed dominant team, but the way these young kids are playing, when they go up against a real good left-hander, they can put these guys in the lineup and not miss a beat. Among rookies, Merrifield batting 324, and uh, he's added quite a bit to their lineup. Eibner's been good. Getting opportunities. One ball, two strikes. And he just got a piece of it to stay alive. And good slider there thrown by Fulmer. And one of the things that I've really admired about the way that he's gone about his business the last four starts, where he's been sensational. And he's used all of his pitches in the very first inning. And whether it be the fastball, whether it be the slider, or whether it be the changeup. Rich Doobie, the Tigers pitching coach, watching intently tonight. Here again is the one two and it slides outside. Now we know the Tigers are going to keep a very close eye on the pitch count and innings thrown by Fulmer this year. They want to make sure that as we get late in the season that uh, he's not overtaxed. We had Al Avila on our air in Chicago and we asked him that same question exactly what the cutoff would be for Fulmer. Little chopper third base side the shortstop Iglesias comes over to make the play. Got him by half a step. Ooh, Will Little, he didn't know what to, excuse me, that's Ted Baird over there. He almost called him safe, and then he came up with the right hand. Pretty close. That'll bring up Escobar. What did Al tell you in terms of a possible cutoff? He said about 20%. It usually the okay. progression for a young pitcher like a foamer is like 20%, but he also said they're not going to talk about it a lot. They're just going to watch him. They already have the plan laid out for Fulmer how he can get to 20 percent above what he's did last year. And if the Tigers are fortunate enough to get into the postseason, they expect that they will watch him close enough that he'll be eligible for that. In the air to center field and cruising over is Romine to make the catch. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense presented by Beaumont Health. Upton in left field. Romine gets the nod in center field. Maven still not able to go with that sore quad. Moya appears to be getting a lot more reps out there with J.D. Martinez on the disabled list. And let's hope that the youngster takes advantage of what opportunities he'll get here lately. Well, Brad Ospis got some bad news last night with the injury to J.D. Martinez, but uh, he remained upbeat today before the game. Knowing he still has a quality lineup and uh, it's an opportunity now for Stephen Moya. This big swing by Hosmer 0 and 1. 96 miles an hour with that fastball. Hosmer at 315 this year, 12 homers, 41 driven in. Here's the 0 1. The Tigers kept him quiet for the most part last night. Hosmer was 0 for 3, an RBI ground out. He's having a really good year, batting 315 with 12 homers. He's driven in 41. One and two. Wonder if he's feeling any more pressure these days with the absence of Gordon and Mustakas in their lineup. And also the fact that uh, Kendrick Morales really is not performing all that well. Yeah, good point. Morales, who was dynamite last year, has scuffled this season mightily. He just threw Hosmer an 89 mile per hour changeup. Follow that up at 96. Two and two. He's got three pitches he can get you out with. He can go with that slide piece down around that back foot of Hosmer, or he can throw him a fastball inside, or he can go back to the fading changeup. Hosmer shoots one on the ground at third, fielded on a hop by Castellanos. It'll be a one, two, three inning for Michael Fulmer.
Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be when it's time. Come to Comerica. The all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. And by Kroger. Them babies trying to stay cool, Mario. Everybody is, right? <laughs> it's good to be a kid, isn't it? <laughs> they don't really care about the heat, do they? You could just get dirty. You could just get wet. It doesn't really matter. Here we go in the second. Jordano Ventura going back to the hill. Castellanos leads it off. Tigers had a single but no damage in the first and a strike called on Nick. Castellanos at 296, 13 home runs. Was one for four in the opener last night. The 0 1 is a swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. That ball bounced four feet in front of home plate. In front of the dish, unbelievable. I don't see this often. No, you don't. Oh, and two. And he got him strike three in the outside corner. Castiel is going to beef about this. No, 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 he says to Will Little. It's kind of a late call, too. First strike out of the ball game. Let's check it out. A little off the plate, it appeared, according to Mr. Fox Tracks. But Castellanos had a beef. Here is Justin Upton now with one out. Ventura struck out 10 in his last start, which was by far his season high. He pours in a fastball at 99. You know, they were kind of worried about him, Mario, because before he took the ball five days ago, it was in that Baltimore series where he got ejected for hitting Manny Machado in last year. When he, he would have those issues where he would have those dust ups with he had three or four of them he had to come out and he wouldn't pitch well. And they were concerned that he would not be as aggressive when he got the ball five days ago, but he pitched one of his best games of the year. Yeah, you could argue it was his best start of the year. Ten strikeouts, one walk, one run. Ninety one pitches, two. Just seven innings. Two. Man, that thing goes all the way to the backstop. Look out, everyone. One ball, two strikes. Ninety nine and Will Little, the home plate umpire, ducking out of the way. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. That's that curveball that he had in the start against the Chicago White Sox, and it was an outstanding pitch for him that day, and it's turned out to be a really good pitch for him already. Five outs into this game. He has a fastball that gets up to 99. He's got that curveball at 84, and he also has a real good changeup. First two strikeouts of the game for Ventura. Here is Steven Moya, who was called up last night after the game with the injury to J.D. Martinez. And he shoots this one on the ground with a shortstop and eats up Escobar, and he has no play. Tigers again have a two out base runner, a base hit. Escobar won a gold glove last year and usually makes this play. He's one of the best defensive shortstops in the game, but a base hit for Steven Moya. And the Tigers have their second hit of the game. That'll keep it going now for James McCann. For McCann, a homer in two walks and a sack fly last night. Talk about a productive evening. Here's the strike at the knees, 0 1. Can up to 195 now. He said four home runs. And he also threw out Lorenzo Kane trying to steal last night. Here's the 0 1. Two really good defensive catchers. And they're playing in this game tonight. Perez for them, McCann for us. Two outstanding throwing catchers. And of course, Perez is back. May not be a better offensive catcher in the sport, really. It's pretty good. Buster Posey, I guess, would be up there. He's way up there. Ooh, good pitch on the inside part of the plate. One and two. And McCann now has words for Will Little. Yeah. It seems 
seems like for as good as Buster Posey is, we really don't hear about him that much. Agreed. I forgot all about Buster. Yeah. That one just missed. Two balls, two strikes. I guess it's the whole West Coast thing. Play the it's late games it. on the West Coast. I think you're right. The thing about Ventura, uh, the Tigers know that he has a lot of confidence in that curveball right now, but there's no way you can look for that pitch uh, when he's got 99 in his back pocket with the fastball. You just have to hope he makes a mistake with the pitch. Off the end of the bat, foul. That was a two seam, 98 mile per hour fastball. Two seamer. Two seamer. With late life. Ventura this year has had some issues with the base on balls. His walks per nine is about four and a half. And he's had a couple of six walk games. Comes that curveball again. And it's lifted in the air to right field. That'll chase Orlando back. Still running. That ball carried almost to the warning track. No runs a hit. One man left. As a starter is now for rookies at least in Tigers franchise history it belongs to Michael Fulmer. How about that? He surpassed uh, John Hiller and with that uh, first inning scoreless frame. He's doing some special things. Well score as we go to the bottom of the second it'll be Kane Perez and Morales and Fulmer got him one two three in the first and a couple of ground balls and a fly out. The Kansas City Royals are doing exactly as they did against Justin Verlander in last night's contest. They're swinging early and often against Justin. They did that in the first inning against Fulmer. Kane standing deep in the box looks at ball one up and in. Eight home runs this year for Lorenzo Cain. Swing and a miss. Good slide piece. Cain looking for that fastball. You heard his bat swinging at that slider. Cain last year finishing third in the MVP voting. Behind Donaldson and Trout. Ground ball to third. Right there is Castellanos. One away. Four straight retired to start this game by Fulmer. Bring up Salvador Perez. You know what would be nice is if the home crowd could watch Michael Fulmer pitch. I mean, it's it's worked out this way, but eight of his first ten have come on the road this year. I've noticed that, including tonight. That's just the way the schedule has fallen. Obviously, not by design. And Perez looks at a strike. And he took the ball five days ago in New York. And probably the biggest stage of all. And boy, was he good in the Bronx. The 0 1 pitch. 
Perez an eight game hitting streak had a hit in the ball game last night was the MVP of the World Series last year. He's a fan favorite too. Not only here in Kansas City but across baseball a lot of people love Salvador Perez a lot of energy great personality popped up behind home McCann coming over may have room nope it's a rollback that's the pitch that uh, Brad Ausmus just absolutely loves and it really doesn't matter who the batter is in the batter's box you throw that fastball up and tight very few guys can do any damage whatsoever in that area and it it's a very difficult pitch to lay off of. It looks very good to the hitter. One and two. Now Perez fouls it straight back. Did not get that one up high enough, that fastball. Well, he's been about as hot as anybody in the league in the last five games. Salvador Perez hitting at a 474 clip with three home runs. Bounce in two balls and two strikes. Remember that uh, organization friendly contract that Perez signed a few years back. I well, do remember they, that they rewarded him. Uh, they gave him an extension in March which uh, pretty much paid him the way he should be paid which is a real nice gesture uh, by the Kansas City Royals and it really shows how much of a family it is here in Kansas City. Swing and a miss and Fulmer takes care of him. We're going to make that our bell tire pitch by pitch. And yeah, a real nice, easy fastball at 96. And then he started climbing the ladder on three consecutive pitches. Then he bounced one breaking ball. Then he came back with that nasty slider. And to get Perez to swing over the top of. I don't think I've seen anybody really hit his sliders hard at all. Obviously, when he makes that pitch, you're not going to touch that one. But even when he leaves it up a little bit, they don't barrel it up that much. Here's Kendrys Morales. He lines one into right field, a base hit. They're going to swing early, and they're going to swing often, especially if they know you're going to challenge them with that 96 mile per hour fastball on the very first pitch of most at bats. Good swing there by Kendrys. First hit of the ball game for the Royals. Two out base runner now for Paulo Orlando. Orlando last night two out of four it was his triple that uh, resulted in the injury to J.D. Martinez. He's getting a lot of playing time this year and he's performing very well batting 336 and really good defensively in right field. Drives this one in the air to center hit well Roman is on the run still going back won't get it up against the wall Perez coming to third they're going to stop in there. And Orlando has a double off the center field wall. One of the things that Fulmer and one of the things that McCann need to understand, and I know McCann understands it because he talked about it last night when Verlander was pitching. You've got to start to throw some different pitches on the very first pitch to these guys. You just can't start to try to overpower them with fastballs. You got to throw a breaking ball, you got to throw a changeup because they're swinging early. Anybody but Perez running in that uh, scoreless streak would have been over. Yeah, that's a run. By the time Perez, or by the time uh, Morales Kendrick's, got to third base, there was just no chance to score him. They're about the same speed. <laughs> That's not really a whole lot of difference, is there? <laughs> well, here is Brett Eibner trying to score a couple of runs with a base hit. Each team now with two hits. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. See, that's the slider. You know these guys are swinging. You have to start to incorporate some off-speed stuff. Eibner hit his first major league home run off Justin Verlander last night. In five games this year, batting 471. He displayed a lot of power in the minor leagues as well, did Eibner. One ball, one strike. Seven of the first eight hitters so far in the game tonight against Fulmer have swung at the first pitch. Here's the 1 1. 
Swing and a miss. Great location with the breaking pitch there thrown by Fulmer. One and two on Eibner. Fulmer trying to wiggle out of this jam. Driven back out of play. Eibner was a college teammate of the Tigers James McCann. And, uh, they both went to Arkansas. Eibner was a second round pick in 2010. James McCann a second round pick in 2011. And now uh, on the same major league field although. Very different positions. Again the one two swing and a miss he struck him out and. Fulmer comes back nicely. That slider is looking good tonight. Two strikeouts for Fulmer. Royals leave him at second and third. As we came on the air of 102 degrees here in Kansas City, it's definitely a no socks kind of a night. But if you're going to wear socks, why not wear fashionable socks? And that's what we're seeing from the Tigers. James McCann was walking right past me as we were doing the Tigers live pregame show, sporting the socks with the stripes. And I said to him, new look. And he said, smiled. Yeah, yeah. So you see more and more guys, Verlander among them, wearing the, the pants high, the socks exposed. And so we know that Rod Allen knows fashion Rod your thoughts I like them I like them a lot as a matter of fact they've got a lot of guys these days that are wearing the uh, pants high so why not have a little style a little color in there it looks old school to me I love them there's a little blooper in the center field that's going to drop base hit John I'm surprised you don't have a pair on down there you're closer to the action than we are I'm wearing no socks tonight. <laughs> no socks tonight. He's not wearing any shoes either <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> I've got my That's socks too much and, information. You know, I've got my feet in buckets of water, buckets <laughs> of ice water, like you did back in the day. No, we're fine. It's not that. It's really not that bad here. Once the uh, the sun dips over the top of the stadium, and uh, baseball players will tell you they love playing in conditions like this, socks or otherwise. All right, John. Thanks. Okay. The uh, Tigers sporting a little bit of a new look tonight. And one thing about uh, Ventura on the mound, uh, he has not given up one stolen base this year. Obviously, he's very quick getting the ball to home play. As a matter of fact, the last stolen base he gave up was in his final start of 2015. So don't expect uh, Romine to be on the move here. And then you add in the fact that Perez, uh, behind the plate, is a really good thrower uh, to the bases. You like the socks, Mario? I love them. 
It really does look old school. I love them. Well, they got so many guys wearing the high socks now. You might as right. well add a little something to them. A little flair. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Actually, kind of brings me back to uh, the old days. It's kind of an old days look. Yeah, you look good. You play good. You play good. And they pay you good. <laughs> Here's the O2. <laughs> That's a little bit low. One ball, two strikes. It all comes together. It all, it all comes full Look circle. Look at Mickey. <laughs> he plays good. And he looked to it. <laughs> he gets paid good, yes, too. Yes, he does. And there's Moya, by the way, who's uh, taking a uh, tip from uh, J.D. Martinez, apparently, writing some things down. So we've got three guys, man, trying to get the college education again, trying That's to get right. the diploma. <laughs> we got McCann writing in the book, and J.D. writing in the book. And uh, now Moya. Well, he had a single in his first at bat against Ventura, so he's putting Ventura in his book. Meanwhile, Miguel, everything just right up in the old noggin there. That's right. Don't need to write anything down. One and two on Ian Kinsler. And a drive toward left field. That ball is caught on the run by Brett Eidner. Nice running play. Told you that uh, Eidner is a really good defender. He also has a really good throwing arm in the outfit. He's not Alex Gordon. Of course, Gordon on the disabled list, he wins gold gloves, but this guy has played some really good defense since he's been in the big leagues. It's a great jump. And this ball looked like it had double written all over. It's a hanging breaking ball. That's one of the worst ones uh, Ventura has thrown today. And just a real nice jump, direct route to the ball by Eibner. Ventura appreciates it. A little nod to his left fielder. Here's the Glacius now. Fly to right field his first time up. What's going on here? Something in the mask of uh, home plate umpire Will Little. Glacey is trying to extend that 14 game hitting streak. And one of the things on first base if you're Romine we know already that Ventura is throwing a lot of curveballs. So if he does throw more curveballs in this particular at bat uh, you might want to pick one out and if he bounces it you can surely get to second base. Romine single to get things started here in the third. Andrew is two for two and stolen base attempts this year. I talked to Mabin last night at the hotel. He told me that he was going to try everything possible you know, to play here tonight. But apparently, when he got to the ballpark early today, you know, the quad's still sore enough that they don't want to risk any further damage. Brad said before the game today that Mabin could pinch run if needed. So he's good enough to do that. But uh, I think they're being extra cautious, giving him uh, another day before they get him out there. You know, Cameron wants to play. Ball one to Iglesias. And 14 game hitting streak currently for Jose Iglesias, which is the longest such streak in the major leagues as we speak. Longest of the year belongs to Jackie Bradley, a 29 gamer. And Iglesias batting 380 over that 14 game stretch. Runner goes. Pretty good jump, bouncing ball, foul. Hit and run there. And a good count to do it in. And Romine on the move, and Iglesias forced into swinging the bat. One ball, one strike. Romine actually had a pretty good jump for a hit and run. Dave Clark down at third, running through the signs. Infield in tight at third base. That's Cuthbert, even with the bag. Bouncing ball to short. Escobar to his right. There's one relay in time. A double play. That's a real nice turn by the middle infielders of the Kansas City Royals. And Brad says, "Hold on, we want to look at it." Right now, it stands as a six-four-three. Nice turn, and Brad says, "Forget about it. He'll wave it off." Inning over. No runs. One hit. Nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the third in KC.
two in this four game set and still no score. Good pitching matchup tonight between Fulmer and Ventura. And Michael Fulmer gave up a double and a single in the second, but they did not score. And now Chesler Cuthbert leads it off. Bender drops in high, one ball, no strikes. Yeah, Fulmer now seven of nine in first pitch strikes and through the batting order of the Kansas City Royals. Cuthbert in the ball game last night was 0 for 3. Four home runs this year, nine driven in. Here's the 1 1 pitch. He went. 1 and 2. Not many change ups thrown tonight so far by Fulmer, but he's thrown a lot of breaking balls, a lot of sliders. He's had a good one so far. Fastball's gotten up to 96. Way high. With Mustakis out of their lineup the rest of the year, Cuthbert playing third base these days. Uh, Mustakis had seven homers before going on the DL, tearing up his knee. Here's the 2 2. Outside, three balls, two strikes on Cuthbert. Merrifield and then Escobar to follow. Here's the 3-2 offering. Fouled straight back. Fulmer has not lost a start since May the 5th, and from the 5th to right now is ERA 2.40 in that stretch. There's another foul straight back. It has been some kind of run for Michael Fulmer, who really didn't start off that well in spring training, Rod. He uh, kind of struggled at the beginning. It was his first uh, spring training with the Tigers. There probably was a few nerves. Uh, they loved his arm. They loved the breaking ball. They wanted him to work on a changeup. And when they sent him down to Toledo, which he did, and he came back up, and Santa Lamaki and also James McCann, along with the pitching coach, Rich Doobie, they encouraged him into throwing the pitch. And in his last five starts, he's been tremendous. Three and two on Cuthbert. Cuthbert giving him a battle here. Here's the ninth pitch. Little pop up, shallow left field. Upton coming hard. It's going to drop right in front of him. It'll be a bloop single for Cuthbert. Lead off man on. And Upton had a long way to run and to try to make that play got it in and kept uh, Cuthbert uh, to a single. So the Royals have their third hit Cuthbert thought about going to second and then thought better of it. Here is Whit Merrifield. I know the Royals really don't run as much as they used to Rod but. When you have a catcher like McCann behind the plate, how much does that affect the way you go about your business on the base pass? I think it affects it uh, quite a bit. Especially if you have a guy on the mound like Michael Fulmer who has that real short slide step, which is getting the ball to McCann in about 1 1 2. Uh, unless you're a really fast base runner, you're not doing yourself any favors by trying to uh, steal a base here. Good hit and run count, though, if they do want to put a runner in motion. Fulmer has not given up a run in four starts, so Ned Yost might want to be a little bit more aggressive here tonight against Fulmer. Ball high, 2 0. Oh, the count now on Whit Merrifield. We'll bring McCann out to the mound. Royals came into play tonight with a record of 35 and 31. They had their Nine game home winning streak snapped by the Tigers last night. I mean, this is a Royals team that just doesn't lose at home. They've been a streaky team. Poor team on the road, really good team at home. Their starting pitching has been outstanding at home for the most part. And on the road, they just really can't get anybody out. Different team when they leave this ballpark. Meanwhile, Merrifield waits on the 2 0 pitch. 
on the outer edge a strike call. It's a well located fastball at 94. Airfield 0 for 1 with a ground ball. Just a two time all star in the minor leagues a two time player of the year as well in the minor leagues. And the 2 1 bunted popped up and it's going to drop a diving try by Fulmer everybody is safe. Did he touch it. I think he did. Had he not touched that ball the backspin would have carried that foul. An outstanding effort by Fulmer nonetheless but if he does not make contact with the baseball the spin that was on the baseball would have carried it foul. Fulmer came up holding his back this is not something you want to see especially a guy the size of Michael Fulmer diving like that. And when Michael got up he uh, held his lower back a little bit. That's something we saw Daniel Norris do in his first Tigers start last year in Baltimore made a diving play. And Fulmer not afraid to stretch it out. That play he made it was in Chicago wasn't it. Norris was that Chicago that was same Baltimore. day the homers Baltimore that was Baltimore, Baltimore. Yeah. Meanwhile McCann going out there to kind of give him a, a blow a little bit. I don't know Brad and Kevin might have to go out there. He's he looks like he's uh, I don't know. I don't want to speculate but he's taking a long time to get back on that mound for just a dive. Well, he clearly was bending over once he hit the deck and, and got to his feet. So I think he's still bothered a little bit. Meantime, the Royals have two men on. Nobody out. Now they've got their number two hitter now. He's good bunner. He already has six sack bucks this year, and more than likely. Alcides Escobar will be up there trying to advance the runners. Tigers are expecting it. They're in tight at the corners. If you're Fulmer and you think he's going to bunt, you throw the fastball on the top of the strike zone to see if you can get Escobar uh, to bunt the ball in the air. They pulled it back. They'll throw back down to second base. Not in time. A strike was called on Escobar. I don't know if he called it on the bunt or where the uh, pitch landed. Escobar can't believe it's a strike. He may be thinking I pulled the bat back, but it still may have been a strike anyway. Yeah, it was called a strike. Six sack bunts this year for Escobar. That's the most in the American League. And he'll drop this one down nicely to third base. Castellanos will throw him out. That'll advance the runners. Second and third now. Time for a game break. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mick, thanks. Here it's uh, tied up at zero, but the Royals are threatening here as we play in the bottom of the third. Eric Hosmer coming up. Trevor Bauer's been pitching some pretty good baseball for the tribe since he's been inserted back into that starting rotation. And we always knew he had the talent, but he apparently is now starting to put it together for the Indians. Be careful on the first pitch to Hosmer. He's very aggressive. Good slider there. Hosmer is 0 for 1 and now 0 for 4 in the series. He came into this ball game batting 353 against right handed pitch. And Tigers over shifting on Hosmer in the infield, even though he has a lot of hits the opposite way already this year. And the first time he made it out today, it was a ground ball to third base. Ball high, 2 and 0. Oh. Fulmer gave up a two out single and a double in the second but he got a big strike out of Eibner. And 
And now in more difficulty here in the third. Now time called. McCann runs out to the mound. The two have already had a couple of conversations. And one more look at the dive by Fulmer on the bunt. Meanwhile, Hosmer now waiting on a 2 0. Inside, three balls and no strikes. May as well put him on. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, you got Kane, the right-hander, waiting on deck yeah, because he might have the green light here if you're trying to throw him a strike with a fastball, and you don't want that. And put him on and go for the double play with Lorenzo Kane. He is swinging 3 0 and he sends it back into the seats tardy down the third base line. 3 and 1. No score, bottom of the third. The Royals threaten. You've got the open base. The last thing you want to do here is allow the left hander to beat you with a base hit to drive in two runs if you're Fulmer and James McCann. Inside, he lost it. Ball four. That loads him up. Not the worst thing in the world here. You can double up Kane. He's grounded into seven double plays. Even though he has good speed, Lorenzo takes that really big swing. And it takes him a long time to get out of the batter's box. So anything in on the ground, and then Fulmer has an opportunity to get out of this unscathed. Well, he hit one of Cassianos in his first at bat, a 5-3 ground out. Another ground ball would look mighty good here. Kane had a couple of hits, including a double last night. He's got Cuthbert at third, Merrifield at second. Hosmer at first. Swing and a miss. 0 1 on Kane. Kane obviously looking for a first pitch fastball and could not hold up on the slider. This will be the 50th pitch coming up now for Michael Fulmer. That 95 miles an hour looks mighty good. Oh, good call. Touch inside. One ball, one strike. Little chopper foul. Now one and two on Kane. So Kane is currently third in the voting for American League outfielders. Mike Trout, Jackie Bradley in the top two spots in the All-Star voting, and then Kane third. We saw last year the Royals do a really good job, their fans at least, of uh, voting their players in. Doing not another good job this year voting them in. Here's the one-two. Two and two on Lorenzo Kane. That was a change up there thrown by Fulmer. He hasn't used that pitch all that often tonight. It's been mostly fastballs and breaking balls, but that was a change up. And it was located in a really good area. Lorenzo Kane just did a nice job of laying off the pitch. Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball back up the middle should be two, six, four, and three. A double play. That is a thing of beauty. 
Michael Fulmer loads the bases and then gets the huge double play from Kane. No runs, couple of hits, couple of men left on base, and a happy Michael Fulmer. Quince here. It's a pitch by pitch to Lorenzo Kane. Look at every pitch is south of the knees. Fulmer knows he needs him to pound something into the dirt so he can get the 6 4 3 double play to get himself out of the jam. That's one of the things that I admire about the kid Fulmer is that there's no situation that he's in awe of. He knew exactly what he needed. He needed a ground ball and he didn't waste any time by throwing any pitches up in the strike zone. Executed it nicely and so Fulmer keeps us a scoreless game as we go to the fourth. And he also did a nice job of pitching around the first baseman Hosmer. Miguel Cabrera stands in to get it started now. Cabrera Martinez Castellanos. No score, fourth inning. Little chopper back up the middle. Another base hit for Cabrera into center field. <laughs> Ventura just looks at Miguel as Miguel's running down the line and they're talking to each other. <laughs> it's funny. I think he's living large now. I think Ventura started it just kind of like chuckling at it. I mean, can I get anybody out? A couple of seeing eyes singles. We're the guys. Brick Paving brings you the scouting report on Victor Martinez at the age of 37, became the second oldest Tiger to hit three homers in a game behind only Ty Cobb, who did it at the age of 38. Second time Victor has done it. He also did it back in 2004 when he was a rookie. With the Cleveland Indians. He did it in Seattle. Here is Martinez now as he bounced out his first time up, stands in, looks at a strike at the knees in 97. And Victor homered a couple of times against Ventura last year in a game at Comerica Park. And don't think for one moment Ventura doesn't know that. Martinez did not start in any of the games in Chicago. They missed him too. Here's those home runs last year against uh, Ventura for Victor. August of last year. It's a beautiful day at Comerica Park. Now the 0-2. Metal bounce in, a breaking ball that Perez goes down to block. Castellanos will be next. The Tigers to the ball game last night had 13 hits. They scored 10 runs, and so yet again they have at least 10 or more hits. Yeah, Tigers' offense starting to roll. 
especially when the bottom of the third of the lineup starts to hit. McCann, Upton, when they start to get into the act. Well, chopper, right side of the infield. Merrifield, a second one. Relay. In time, a double play. Victor was hustling. He was reaching. He was lunging. He just couldn't quite get there. Second double play turned behind Mr. Ventura. It's a nice job here by Merrifield. Merrifield, the second baseman. He knew Miggy was running to second, so he had plenty of time to get the out there. And he knew once he got the ball to the shortstop, uh, Escobar, there would be plenty enough time with his arm strength to complete the double play with Victor running down the line. There's a ball inside to Castellanos. And so both of these young pitchers have gotten double play balls in the last couple of last inning to get themselves out of jams. Yeah, Ventura's had a couple of them. Castellanos waits on the 1 0 pitch. All the way to the backstop it goes. Victor uh, tweaked something as he uh, hit the bag down at first base, but he was. Gingerly getting back to the dugout area. Every time you see him uh, running as hard as he just did down the line and reaching for the bag on that lunge, man, you just kind of cringe. Yeah, you almost uh, don't want him to run as hard as he did right there, to be perfectly honest with you. 2 0 is hammered down the right field line. Foul. If you notice, Ventura, you talked about this earlier, Mario, how easy his delivery is. It's not. A lot of movement to it, but even when he delivers the ball, his body's not moving all over the place like it usually does. And after his last start against the White Sox, his manager Ned Yo sat him down in the dugout and he gave him a homework homework assignment. He says, "I want you to go back and watch the seven innings you pitched against the White Sox, and I want you to watch every single pitch." Because of the, the fact that he was so under control, they had really seen him like this. Three balls, one strike. But they desperately need him. If Kansas City is going to go anywhere in the central, they really need Ventura to be as good as he can be. Yeah, that's an understatement. And they don't want any of the distractions. Here's the 3 1 pitch. He is still waiting on the appeal. He was suspended for nine games for his part of the brawl with Manny Machado after hitting Machado in the fight that ensued. So he's appealing that. I think they head to New York. Uh, after this particular series so there's probably going to be a situation where he has his hearing while they're in New York so expect him to serve some type of a suspension next week. Now the 3 2 Castellanos hammers it to center base hit. Two out single for Nick in case you missed this uh, this was two starts ago when Ventura was pitching against the uh, Baltimore Orioles and he and Manny Machado had some issues. Watch Ventura here. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> he hit Manny with a 99 mile per hour fastball. 99. Here is Justin Upton with two outs. Ball one. We had a couple of pretty good ones this year. Of course, the uh, Rubenando Odor Jose Bautista incident, and that one where punches were landed as well. Typically, baseball fights don't them out to much more than just kind of holding each other. Not those last two. No. No, they were uh, they were going at it pretty good. And Ventura's not a big guy. Upton in his first at bat struck out. Six game hitting streak for Justin. One one. And with uh, JD Martinez out, they really need Justin to, to step up and to perform the way that he is capable of performing. And they know that he could do it. He has shown some signs in the last three weeks or so of, you know, getting out of that funk that he was in at the beginning of the season. That is a 95 mile power two seam fastball. He's got a lot of light, light late, late life with that pitch. They just ran into the hands of Jay up. 
Ventura last year was very good after the All Star break, nine and two post All Star break last year. They gave Cueto a lot of credit for the way that he pitched in the second half of the season. Upton goes down swinging again, and that'll end the inning. No runs, couple of hits, one man left on our way to the bottom of the fourth inning here in KC. No score. And now a Sox update. I caught the attention of Tigers longtime equipment manager Jim Schmeichel and I asked him what's the deal with the Sox and he gave me a smile and said what do you mean and then gave me another smile and said my lips are sealed but Schmeichel did add that after the All Star break teams around baseball will be offered new socks to wear so maybe this is just a hint of what's to come. And it's come to this Mario and Rod. I've done this a long time. Yeah. The career has come to mm -hmm. giving socks updates. I'll be at, I'll be at DSW working on Monday if you're looking for me. <laughs> How about John? He put his inspector gadget hat on and he went and found Jim Schmeichel and got the lowdown. I love it. That's uh, just it's just good investigative journalism. You That's really are the hardest working man <laughs> in show business. I wear ten and a half by the way Keats. <laughs> you, well, you want a loafer or what are we looking at here. I, I can take care of you. I might be able to get you the employee discount. Who knows man you are a sleuth. Thank love you very it. much. <laughs> well with one out. Fulmer now will go to work against Kendrys Morales. Still no score bottom of the fourth inning Fulmer pitching out of a jam in each of the last two innings. Although in the third it was a bit of a tougher jam he had the bases loaded one out got a double play. Morales had a single in the second. Here's the 1 0 and it's a strike call good change up there thrown by Fulmer 86 miles an hour out of the same slot as the fastball and the slider. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Busted him inside at 97, 2 and 1. And Michael Fulmer said he had some family here in attendance. His parents are here. Uh, he's from Oklahoma City, so it's not too far away. So they made the trip over uh, to get a chance to watch their son make history. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1 now in Morales. Be careful here. Don't give in. You've got right handers coming up after him and you know he's not going to steal second base so you don't have to give in to Morales right here. Lost in ball four. One on and one out. Well we've mentioned throughout the course of the night it's kind of uh, kind of hot here. The fuel conditions are presented by Ace Hardware. Kind of hot. <laughs> and the Scotts company. Kind of hot. <laughs> <Not, not, laughs> kind of. 93 degrees. I think the heat index was close to 100 if not beyond that earlier today. But it's clear at least there's no rain, right? It's all good, man. 
I actually like this kind of weather. I mean, when, yeah. you, when you're working out, you know, I just like to sweat. And when you go outside here, you just start sweating. It really makes you feel like you, you're doing a whole lot. A little peeps out. Uh, they ain't phased by the heat. Beyond the stadium, they don't care. Let's play. It's good to see the kids outside, though, because kids don't play outside that much anymore. Well, unless they take their uh, video games with them outside. True, true that. That's about the only way. We used to go outside, and we didn't come home until the street lights came on. Stick ball? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Want to know the count on Paulo Orlando? In there, a strike called at the belt. Orlando thought it was high. There's been a lot of uh, players on both sides here tonight already that have not necessarily agreed with the strike calling of Will Little. It's a strike. Yeah, kind of. What fast track <laughs> say now? It touched the corner. You're right. Here's the one one pitch. Popped him up. This head heading back to the seats. It's McCann looking but running out of real estate. One and two on Paulo Orlando. Here's a guy you really have to admire. Orlando spent nine full seasons in the minor leagues. That's nine full seasons without even a call up in September. Not even you know coming up for an injury. Nine years before he finally got his first chance last season. And he picked up almost 3,900 minor league at bats. That is perseverance. Well, Fulmer to the belt. And a swing and a miss. Orlando is dusted, two gone. By the way, stay tuned to Tigers Live following the game. We'll select the Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's. Stop by for your breakfast favorites now being served all day. Three strikeouts for Fulmer. Here's Brett Eibner. Swing and a miss. We are watching Fulmer be as dominant as he is and has been over the last, I don't know, half dozen starts. But as he gets through the league the second time, Rod, what are teams going to start to key on against Fulmer to have better success? Well, teams are going to have to key on the fastball first and foremost. When you have a guy on the mound that throws 97, 98, you always have to respect that. You really do. But what they will look at is a strike throwing efficiency. What they will look at is that slider, Mario. Most of the sliders that he's throwing, they're out of the strike zone. So when he goes up against a very disciplined team like the Boston Red Sox for instance right those guys will lay off the slider they will force him into throwing another pitch over the plate and then that's where he has to make that adjustment and he has to make that adjustment on the fly during the course of the game it's going to happen see the Kansas City Royals still by and large have a young team for the most part yes they've been to the World Series but by and large it's still a very young team and they're still a very aggressive team and a lot of the right handers have not been able to hold up on the slider that is in the dirt here today. One ball two strikes. Grounded foul down the third baseline but I expect former just like Verlander did after the first couple of years you know you add a cutter you add a two seamer I expect him to add a pitch every year something that really helps him in evolving into being a really good major leaguer for a long long time. So he's at three now he's got the uh, fastball the breaking ball and the changeup. Yeah. And, and you think that uh, next C season he might throw something else in the mix. cutter maybe two seamer every now and then. Here's the one two swing and a miss. But well, the slider has been devastating tonight. Nasty. Four strikeouts for Fulmer. Tiger fans loving it. And Fulmer cruising along in a scoreless game.
Homer and Ventura no score as we go to the top of the fifth inning now in tonight's game we are participating in the home run challenge to benefit uh, benefit rather prostate cancer research so far after four days this week nearly one million two hundred ninety thousand dollars has been raised you can make a pledge by going to homerunchallenge.org and help out and Tigers bats they contributed last night with six homers mightily. Here is Stephen Moya starting things off. Moya McCann Romine, the bottom three for the Tigers. Swing and a miss by Stephen. One ball, one strike. Moya had 13 home runs down in the minor leagues. And that's the difference between the big leagues and the minor leagues. If Moya's sitting in the 1 0 count and he's in AAA, more than likely he's getting a fastball. But Ventura uh, threw him a breaking ball in the dirt and he swung at it. Off the end of the bat, foul, one and two. If you're Ventura now you can go one of two ways you can simply try to finish Moya off with another breaking ball or you can simply climb the ladder uh, with a fastball to change his eye level. Moya now will uh, you would imagine get an extended look here for the Tigers with Martinez out of the lineup and for Steven an opportunity of course he should feel really comfortable now he's been up a couple of times with the big club and a swing and a foul just got a piece of it. He's got nothing else to prove down in the minor leagues and the only thing that was standing in his way up here was J.D. Martinez and Justin Upton obviously those guys are going to play but now he's going to get a chance to play with J.D. being on the disabled list and he'll be able to show. Uh, what he's capable of doing. Fouled away. And here's the JD injury last night in case you missed it. A non displaced fracture of the radial neck of the right elbow. Now, what's that in layman's terms? Well, there's a little crack. And it was not displaced, which means the bone didn't separate from each other. So there's like a little hairline fracture. Thank you, Doctor Infin. Yes, I uh, play one on TV, and so it should take four to six weeks, is what the uh, prognosis is. That's wonderful. Thank you, sir. And everybody at home could understand that too. I'm just making it up, Rod. I have no idea what's going <laughs> it on. It sounded good though. <laughs> there's a drive into center field, and it's going to be caught there by Kane. One out. Bring up James McCann. McCann fly out to right field is only at bat. Really, the Tigers haven't had a major threat. They had a guy on in the third double play ball off the bat of Iglesias, a man on in the fourth double play ball off the bat of Victor Martinez. Well, Ventura is picking up right where he left off five days ago when he was really good against the Chicago White Sox. He struck out 10 White Sox batters in. He only needed seven innings to do so and threw 91 pitches. That's pretty efficient. 98 miles an hour on that fastball. Strike one on McCann. James with nine RBIs in his last 10 games. And Ventura's 10 of 17 in first pitch strike so far tonight. Effortless 98-99 tonight for Ventura. One and two. Every fastball, 95, 97, getting up to 98. He's been up to 99, as a matter of fact. Can waits on a one two. Little chopper hit to the shortstop Escobar. And McCann is out. Two up two down in the Tigers fifth inning. Ventura last year had just one loss in his final 14 starts and route to helping the Royals get to the World Series and winning it. You know you were talking about how good he was the second half of last year that was after. Uh, the Kansas City Royals acquired Johnny Cueto from the uh, Cincinnati Reds and they say that Johnny Cueto really helped him mature the second half of last year. Strike one on Romine. 
I would think that the addition of Cueto last year probably took some pressure off his shoulders as well. Yeah, because before Cueto got to Kansas City, Ventura was the ace of their stand. I see what you did there, Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura, right, right, right. Very nicely done. As a matter of fact, he was the opening day starter last year for Kansas City. Ventura won game six of the 2014 World Series against San Francisco. The Royals end up losing that series. That one just missed outside, and the count now is one and two. A little bit off the plate. Oh mine takes high and the count two and two. We we're touching on this last night, Rob. We've seen Avilas and Romine getting more at bats recently, and both of them now starting to swing the bat a little better. Very important for Brad somehow to try to get them into action so that they can really help out the team. And Romine always comes in as a defensive replacement, but you've got to get in some reps offensively too if you want him to you know, start to swing the bat the way he's capable of swinging the bat. Romine went around one, two, three. Go the Tigers here in the fifth. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. Freaky fast delivery of the game. Michael Former has been on point once again here tonight against a hot Kansas City Royals team in this ballpark. They really haven't barreled him up with if any authority whatsoever. And there's been some really uncomfortable swings against the Tigers rookie. So the Royals coming up now with the number nine hitter, Chesler Cuthbert, leads it off. Fulmer would like to have a snappier inning. He had a 25 pitch third, and then he gave up a walk, but no damage in the fourth. 70 pitches now for Michael. 1-0 is fouled off at home plate. One ball, one strike. Good change up there thrown to Cuthbert. A lot of right-handers are afraid to throw their change up to right-handed hitters because if they make a mistake with that pitch, it's usually right in the happy zone of the right-handed batter. They usually use it to the left-handers because it fades away from the left-handed hitter. And but Fulmer not afraid to throw his. One and two on Cuthbert. Tigers have a staff full of pitchers not afraid to throw the change up to the right handed batter. Justin Verlander will do it. Anibal Sanchez not afraid to do it. Scherzer used to be outstanding at it. Here's the one two pitch. Checked it and he went strike three. See then all of a sudden these Royals are looking for that slider and they're taking these fastballs at 97 but that's pinpoint control. He's pretty good partner. 97 upper reaches of the strike zone and Michael Fulmer just continues to baffle American League hitters. 
he has really seized his opportunity. Here is Merrifield now, the top of the lineup for the Royals. There's a ball outside. Merrifield one for two. Royals had their best chance to score with the bases loaded in the third and only one out but then Fulmer got Lorenzo Cain to bounce into a double play. Here's the one one. Man, dirty all Good. night long everything though he even took a little bit off that breaking ball. The Royals are saying to themselves, we got to look at this guy for the next number of years in huh. our division. Here's the one two. Fouled away. Here's the big boy, big play for Michael Fulmer and well, Major League history. Rookie since 1974. Michael Fulmer, 32 and two thirds scoreless innings. He has passed Oral Hershiser and he's gaining on Fernando Valenzuela. Whoa. Special. Awfully special. Here's the one two. I got a really nice text from uh, Lynette Hiller uh, who was the wife of John Hiller and she said that John wanted to me when I had a chance to see Michael to congratulate him for passing his record his Tigers record and they hope that uh, he gets the major league record so I'll make sure that I pass it on to him after the game. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. John Hiller and his wife good people real good people. Again the one two. Ground ball second base side gobbled up by Kinsler. They're youpers you know they, they live in the youth. The youpers. The youpers. Two outs. Hey buy one ticket get a second one free to see the Tigers take on the Seattle Mariners. It is happening June 20th through the 23rd. To purchase is at Tigers.com slash B-O-G-O. Is that the Fulmer family there? It is the Fulmer family. Well, they're, they're staying hydrated. They're loving what's going on. That's his wife there in the middle, in between the two ladies with the sunglasses on. Kelsey, it's Michael's wife. They don't look nervous at all. Oh no, she's she, she don't have the glasses on. She wants to see. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. Okay, maybe she's a little bit nervous. Yeah, that knee's shaking a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. And the other one's like they eat, they grub, and they drink, and have fun. <laughs> There's a line drive foul down the third baseline. Well, Michael hasn't given him much to be nervous about. He has surrendered a total of four hits in this game. Two out, nobody on here in the fifth. Escobar fly ball and a sacrifice. We'll get back out of play. Well you just wonder if this is the last inning uh, for Michael he's at 82 pitches in his last couple of starts uh, Brad has not let him go uh, much above that so uh, we'll see this might be his final frame. He has only reached 103 times all year. 91 in his last start 88 the start before that. So this might be it. Here's the one two in the air towards center field Romine cruising to his left. That's going to be a one two three inning for Michael Fulmer looking outstanding again tonight.
Dean Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Chevrolet, more than you expect for less than you imagine. Nighttime settling in, the sun setting here in KC tonight. We are still looking for our first run of the ball game. Ventura and Fulmer have been good tonight. And for the Tigers, they'll have the top of the order coming up against Giordano Ventura. Ian Kinsler starts it off, then Jose Iglesias and Miguel Cabrera. 0 for 2 tonight for Ian. Kinsler, a fly out to right, a line out to left. That ball he hit his last time up. Brett Eidmer ran it down to the corner. Nice running play. Ball two on Kinsler. Two and one. Ian still trying to get that next run scored, which would put him at 1,000 for his career. He has scored 57 runs this year, and only Mookie Betts has scored more runs in the American League. 2 1 is a ball outside, 3 and 1. Kinsler trying to extend a hitting streak of his own seven straight ball games. Three one pitch is popped up foul back out of play. Full count now three and two. There's Iglesias waiting on deck trying to extend his hitting streak as well at 14. And Ventura has not walked a batter tonight. Michael Fulmer's walked a couple. But I think Michael Fulmer's two walks were by design. Pitching around a couple of left handers. One for sure. Ground ball back up the middle. Escobar spinning play throws and he got him. The key to that play is the fact that he's got such long arms and long legs. He's able to get there and then stay on his feet. Because if he has to dive for the ball, then there's no way that he's able to make the play and throw out Ian Kinsler. He won a gold glove last year, four or five steps to the left, stays on the feet, and then makes an acrobatic, accurate throw. So Kinsler has been robbed a couple of times tonight, that time by the shortstop Escobar. Here's Iglesias. Jose knocked into a double play 6 4 3 variety back in the third. Good pitch. Change up. This guy's got great stuff, man. Two really good young yeah, pitchers on the mound tonight. And he missed outside. One ball, two strikes. Ventura's 5 0 against the Tigers' career with an ERA of 3.82. Tigers have yet to beat him. Here's the 1 2 pitch. Bouncing ball to short. More of a routine play for Escobar. Two up, two down. But ours brings you the big money encounter. The Tigers ranks in the month of June in the major leagues in terms of a lot of the offensive categories look at this pretty good batting average over 300 Wally Joyner has to be happy about these numbers tonight though they've not been able to scratch a run across against Ventura Miggy looks at ball one and Miggy has two of the five Tiger hits uh, this evening, both singles. Outside, 2 and 0. Oh. 
Cabrera is now five for 12 career against Ventura. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Checked it and he went. So says Will Little. 99 with that last fastball to Miguel. Now the 2 1. On the ground, left side of the infield, charging is Cuthbert. Miggy is out in a 1 2 3 inning for Yordano Ventura. Big slick softball challenge was held a collection of celebrities started by some guys from Kansas City chief among them Paul Rudd and our own a lister Justin Verlander of course was right in the middle it won't surprise you at all to know that he got called over by Paul Rudd and they got a chance to exchange some pleasantries JB mentioned to me that he was invited to the big dinner that the big slick people had when the Tigers were here for the big slick weekend a few years ago and called it a, a terrific night and one of his favorite honors. You know Eric Stone Street of a uh, modern family a ride was uh, here as well. He's one of my favorite bro. He was a lot of big timers. It was that's a great show he's on too. Keith did you get out there playing softball. I did not. I was not invited. In fact they they kind of shooed me off the field. Uh oh. Though. OK. Well you're not an A-lister. <laughs> well not here. There's as I said on the pregame show there there's a handful of people that I'm concerned about that know me but you know out of, out of town not at all really. Yeah, I don't see you here on the team picture, but uh, good job anyway. Good report. The uh, softball game was played here in uh, about a thousand degree weather. <laughs> they had fun too. They did. There's your guy. There he is, Mr. Stone Street. It's all to raise money for a great cause, the Children's Mercy Cancer Center here in Kansas City. They've raised more than three million dollars. Nicely done. All right, Keats. Thanks. It's a ground ball to short off the bat of Kane. Michael Fulmer continues to cruise along. Time for a game break now, and Mickey York. Wow, that's a pretty good night. That's a pretty good division to the American League East. You got three teams separated by two games Baltimore Toronto. There's a swing and a drive in the left field way back to the track to the wall and gone. The streak is over. A long home run for Salvador Perez. And it's been a long time since Michael Fulmer has given up a run. And it came on the first pitch.
number 12 for Perez. One nothing KC. May 21st, the seventh inning against Tampa, the first run allowed since then for Fulmer. And he had 11 strikeouts in that game against Tampa. His stuff was electric that night. Big swing there by Kendrys Morales. 422 feet on that home run. So Fulmer now trying to refocus here against Morales. Single and a walk tonight. And a ball inside 1 1. Way inside to the backstop it goes. He hung it. The ball fouled off. 33 in the third innings, the streak snapped. He knew it was gone. Two balls and two strikes. Oh, that one got Will Little on the arm. Mm. It's gonna hurt for a while. Gotta walk that off. Immediately, McCann goes out to the mound by a little time for Little. Oh, got the bicep. Meanwhile, McCann still out there on the mound. Two and two on Kenry's Morales, the home run by Perez here, the first run of the game here at the bottom of the six. Yeah, the catchers and the umpires, they know how to take care of one another. And when the catchers get foul tips, the umpires, they take a little extra time to make sure the catchers can gather themselves. And Michael Fulmer still throwing 97 miles an hour, 93 pitches in. There's the ball high and away, and he lost in ball four. So a couple of two out base runners. Coach Rich Doobie. There's not been any activity in the uh, bullpen. Yeah, I believe they're probably going to start some activity out there. Yeah, it's starting to scurry a little bit now. We, uh, Rod mentioned that they haven't gone much beyond this area right now for Fulmer and pitches. He's in the 90 range now. And here is our high speed pitch, and it is brought to you by Xfinity. 98 has been the top fastball that. Uh, Michael Fulmer has thrown here tonight. He's gone as low as 85 uh, with a good off speed pitch. Here is Paulo Orlando. Orlando had a double in his first at bat. He is one for two, struck out in his last at bat. Inside 1 0. Shane Green is warming up now in the Tigers bullpen. Tried to check it, but he went. One ball and one strike. Orlando has taken some uncomfortable swings at the breaking ball that Michael's been throwing today. Ball club with five hits. The Royals have scored a run. Look out, that ball up and in gets away from McCann, but that ball came right back to him. 
And Morales not going anywhere. We've seen this a lot this year. And wild pitches, and then they just bounce right back to the catcher. Looks like they got some brick behind the home plate, or it looks like brick anyway. I think Karam right back to McCann. Fortunately, he didn't get enough glove on it to really slow it down all that much. Two and one. Two out solo shot by Salvador Perez is the difference so far. Here's the two one pitch. Orlando didn't like that. All he could do is just look crooked at Will Little. Another one of those change ups at the top of the zone. He's called several pitches at the top of the zone today. He's, he's been consistent in that regard. Ninety seven that time from Fulmer missing up three and two. This will give the runner at first base for Morales a head start. And we'll see if uh, he has enough confidence to throw an off speed pitch here in this fastball count. If he does he'll get a strikeout. Goes and he missed high. He overthrew it. So back to back walks after the home run by Perez. It's going to be it. Brad wants to go to the bullpen here with two on and two out. And 100 pitches on the nose thrown by Michael Fulmer tonight. He will leave with four walks and five strikeouts in this game and he'll give up the baseball Fulmer another outstanding job though tonight wall side windows pitching change the family loves it and the Tigers go to the bullpen will be back. Royals have a one nothing lead Michael Fulmer done for the night Rich Doobie uh, having a talk with him and uh, Fulmer appears uh, real disappointed but man he pitched another outstanding ball game tonight. He had a great fastball got all the way up to 98 miles an hour through some great sliders some good change ups this Kansas City Royals team they're just a very difficult team to beat right here in their own ballpark. Shane Green now with two on and two outs and his first one is outside. And the kid Ventura pitching for the Kansas City Royals, he basically matched Michael Fulmer 
uh, pitch for pitch this evening. The streak ends tonight, though, at 33 and a third scoreless on the Salvador Perez home run. Shane Green has been outstanding since coming off the disabled list. In his last five outings, he's got a 1.69 ERA, nine strikeouts in the five and the third innings he's pitched. Fastball's gotten up to 94, on occasion 95, but the cut fastball and the breaking ball have been plus pitches for Green as well. Fred Agner probably happy that Fulmer's out of the game. Fulmer struck him out twice. Here's the 2 0. Swing and a miss. Those two runners are the responsibility of Michael Fulmer. Eitner was two for four last night, hit his first major league homer. Here's the 2 1. Off the end of the bat, foul, 2 and 2. So Fulmer will fall short of Fernando Valenzuela, the uh, longest in Major League history among rookies since 1974 when Fernando went 35 consecutive scoreless innings. I played in Mexico in 1980 in the winter that season, and Fernando was in Mexico pitching for uh, either Obregon or Navajo. I think it's Obregon. And uh, he was at that time the best left hander that I had ever seen. And he went on to do special things in the big leagues. Green strikes out Brett Eibner and that strands two runners. So one run in for the Royals as we go to the seventh. Has connected for three homers, now two right-handed and one left-handed. The one he hit left-handed hit off Luke Hochaver and Mario last night. The Tigers scored seven runs against the Kansas City Royals bullpen, which is one of the best bullpens in all of baseball. Yeah, Hochaver gave up a couple of those home runs. He hadn't done that in a long while. They scored a lot of runs late, and it was good to see. We'll see what they can do here now as the seventh inning begins. Jordano Ventura back to the mound. One nothing on the home run by Salvador Perez. Martinez Castellanos and Upton. And Tigers have not been able to figure out Ventura. His fastball has gotten all the way up to 99. He's thrown some good change ups. He's thrown some really good curveballs. A couple of ground balls tonight for Victor. A ground out to short and then a double play ball that he bounced into in the fourth. He'll shoot that one in the air to left center base hit. Soft serve out there. Misplayed by Kane. And Martinez is going to try for two. Here comes the throw. It's going to be cut off. And Victor is standing at second base. Oh, what a big break there for the Tigers.
single E8. And it looked like Victor's uh, left leg buckled on him a little bit as he left the batter's box. And then he saw that Kane misplayed it. And then he took off for second, able to make it safely. I did not think he was going to go for it. Good job by him. And a rare misplay by Lorenzo Kane. Brad Ausmus, man, I know you hate to do it, man, yeah. but you've got to consider. You've got to consider possibly pinch running for Victor. And I was thinking along those same lines. You really hate to take him out, but he's a tying run right now. And you can tell that he just uh, doesn't seem right. He's not going to score on a base hit. It's going to take two hits to score. That right knee, you can see him and flinching that leg. But you know what? He's good to go. Here is Castellanos. Nobody out. Tying run is second. We're in the seventh inning. If uh, Castellanos tries to do his job here by hitting a ground ball to the second baseman or the first baseman, which would usually get that base runner to third, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, you see the right side of the infield. They anything hit to the second baseman or the first baseman, they will throw it to third. One ball, one strike on Castellanos. Ventura trying to pitch around the, the uh, error by Lorenzo Kane and center his third error of the year. One and two. Tigers tonight have out hit the Royals six to five. Turner now is up to 96. He's really had no stressful innings. Here's the one two. Just off the plate. And Kansas City Royals dugout thought they should have rung up. And Cassiano's there. Swing and a miss. He took care of him anyway. Down goes Cassiano's one out. Just to remind you as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lights. Four strikeouts now for Ventura. Here is Justin Upton. No luck tonight for Upton. A couple of strikeouts. Martinez, the tying run in second. Upton looks at a strike. It's one of the things that Ventura has started to do, and most of the Tigers know this when he does have runners in scoring position. Uh, he goes to that breaking ball. But as I said earlier in the contest, you still have to respect the fact that he can throw you a 98, 99 mile per hour fastball. One ball, one strike. Upton had that four RBI game on Tuesday. Sends a slow ground ball left side of the infield. Throw is high, no tag, and everybody is safe. Martinez held at second base. And the Royals usually have a pretty good defensive team, but they're going to help the Tigers out in this particular inning. That'll be the second air of the inning. Cuthbert's throw sailed on him. Hosmer tried to apply the tag, and here comes Ned Yost. He must be going to Herrera. He wants a couple of strikeouts. So two errors in the inning for the Royals has opened the door a bit for the Tigers. Cuthbert had plenty of time. He sure did. Ventura's going to get a big round of applause as he departs. 
Royals lead 1 0. Wall side windows pitching change in KC. Some good baseball tonight against the Tigers. I mean, he did not get a lot of strikeouts, but a lot of soft contact off Tigers' bats. He had a good curveball. He threw that quite a bit. He threw fastballs anywhere from 95 to 99 miles an hour. His defense also helped him out, turning two double plays behind him, but a really nice effort uh, turned in by Ventura. Ventura threw 101 pitches. He is done for the night. Here are the numbers six and a third, six hits, five strikeouts, no walks. He's still responsible for the two men aboard. A couple of errors have given the Tigers an opportunity here. Here is Kelvin Herrera. He's been in 32 games. He has 37 strikeouts, and he's only walked six, and he's got an earned run average that's under two. He's got a fastball that Goes up to 100 miles an hour. Big swing and a miss there by Moya, 97 miles an hour. Herrera last year was an all star for the first time in his career. He appeared in 72 games out of the bullpen for the Royals. 70 the year before that. Yeah, seventh inning has usually been his the last couple of years. And Ned Yost not afraid to bring him in when the runners are on base. One run five hits for KC tonight no run six hits for the Tigers. Ooh, half swing there by Moya. And he looked uncomfortable 0 and 2. 99 of that last one from Kelvin Herrera. Let's go back to Kelvin by the way it used to be Kelvin. He's gone back to Kelvin. Go back to Kelvin. That's what happens when you go to the World Series a couple times. <laughs> you change your name. Here's the 0 2. Tardy on 98. Send it back to the seats. I kind of like Kelvin better. Kelvin. Tigers got a leadoff single by Martinez. He went to second on the fielding error by Kane. One out later, an error by Cuthbert. Put two men aboard. Way outside, one two. This has been the hallmark of the Royals the last couple of years. They're uh, back into their bullpen, really from the sixth inning on. So many guys in baseball these days and coming out of the bullpen with 95 and above fastballs. And Kansas City has about five guys in their bullpens that has big arms. Outside again, two and two on Moya. 
That's an 89 mile per hour change up there thrown by Herrera. McCann waiting on deck. Royals bullpen this year a 2.79 earned run average. Ground ball back up the middle and a diving stab at second. Merrifield goes to second one. And that's all they'll get, but what a play by Whit Merrifield. These young kids, the Kansas City Royals, have come called up from the big leagues, have played some outstanding baseball. That ball looked like it was headed up the middle. And take a look at this outstanding play. He dives and then he gets to his feet, his knee one knee, and shuffles it to Escobar for the out. Huge play there for the Royals after committing two errors in the inning. Merrifield stretching out to his right. Two outs now for McCann. Victor Martinez taking third on the play. McCann swings and misses. Round out fly out tonight for McCann. Tying run standing at third, Victor Martinez. The 0 1. Ooh, up and in. And James McCann, he homered in last night's game as well. He got a hanging breaking ball from Luke Hochaver and hit the ball into left center field. Hochaver gave up two home runs last night, and Mickey also took him deep. Shaver not giving up two homers in a game since 2013. One and one on McCann. Oh, up and in again. Spins him out of there, upper 90s. He's going to come back with that uh, real good breaking ball now. After a couple of 97 mile per hour fastballs, high and tight. came in with 37 strikeouts in 31 innings. And he bounced it. It's going to get all the way to the backstop. Victor came halfway oh, Victor. and then turned around. He would have scored that ball climbed the screen but Martinez got at least halfway down the line. Should have just kept coming. He initially reads it well. Boy, what a break there for the Royals. Meanwhile, three and one the count on McCann, and now Perez goes out to the mound. Here's one more look at uh, Victor getting a read good read on the wild pitch and but it comes down halfway shuts it down and retreats and back to third. Three and one on McCann. Romine waiting on deck. Moya was able to take second on that wild pitch, so he is in scoring position. Swing and a miss. There's a high heat at 98. And McCann swung right through it. And McCann swung at ball four, but it's very difficult for a hitter. And when a guy throws as hard as Herrera throws, and you're going to leave the strike zone every now and then because you have to get started early. McCann you really have to shorten up you really can't take an over aggressive swing against a guy throwing as hard as Herrera you have to go from point A to point B as quickly as possible short quick compact swing that's how you attack 
uh, these types of pitchers with the high velocity. Tigers have seen upper 90s all day with Ventura and now Herrera. Ooh, yeah. a breaking ball. Yeah, he did, and he just got a piece of it. That breaking ball was hanging right over the plate for James. Three and two, a seven pitch at bat right now for McCann. Lined foul down the right field line. McCann battling. Martinez at third and Moya down at second base. Base hit here and the Tigers could take their first lead of the night. Three two. Another foul back out of play. This is beginning to start to look like that at bat that uh, Miguel Cabrera had against Herrera last year. That was epic, wasn't it? It sure was. Here's the tenth pitch coming up in this at bat to McCann, who's fighting tooth and nail here against Herrera. Again, the three-two. And a ground ball to first. Hosmer will make the play, and the threat is over. So the Tigers put two on, but leave two. Coming up, the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Jeff Glover and Associates Realtors. It was on a breaking ball, top of the strike zone against Salvador Perez, who connected against Michael Fulmer. Only run of the game here is our Comerica Bank game summary tonight. Perez, the solo shot in the sixth inning. Yortano Ventura, sixth and a third, a scoreless baseball with five strikeouts. And, well, Michael Fulmer's scoreless streak came to an end tonight. 33 and a third, impressive nonetheless. Here come the Royals now in the bottom of the seventh. Shane Green drops in a breaking ball strike. And Shane Green back out there once again throwing nothing but strikes. Chesler Cuthbert leads it off, then Whit Merrifield and Alcides Escobar. Outside, one ball, one strike. Green came on with two men on and two outs in the sixth, and he struck out Brett Eibner. Keeping it a one nothing game. The 
Here's the 1 1 pitch. Missed inside. Two and one. Inside almost hit him. Three balls, one strike on Cuthbert. No activity right now in either bullpen. On deck is the top of the order. Merrifield. Royals run on five hits. Tigers no runs, six hits. KC has left seven men on base tonight. Line drive to left, base hit. Upton over to play it. And it's going to be a leadoff single for Chesler Cuthbert. Six hits now for KC. And now we'll see what they want Merrifield to do. Merrifield singled back in the third. He's one for three tonight. He's put the ball on the ground a couple of times, though. Castellanos on the grass at third. Ball one high. But Merrifield now is hit safely in 11 consecutive home games. And coming into play today, he had been in that leadoff spot for seven games. His batting average, 344 in the leadoff spot. Runner goes on 1 0 and a swing and a miss. It's going to get back to the backstop. And to second base goes Cuthbert. It's a hit and run. It's a breaking ball. James McCann was trying to. Uh, pick it and then make a strong throw down to second base, but and whiffed at the ball on the breaking ball away from him in the stolen base. And for Cuth Cuthbert, he's at second now, nobody out. One ball, one strike on Merrifield. And time called now, and out to the mound goes McCann, calling Castellanos in as well. Now Gene Lamont getting on the phone to the uh, bullpen. Well, Bearfield in his last six he is 10 for 25 with a couple of homers. Cuthbert, meanwhile, has just picked up his first major league stolen base. Here's the 1 1. Fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes. Tigers have action. Lane Hardy. Mark Lowe starting to loosen too. One and two. In the air toward right field. Here comes Moya to make the play, and the runner will hold. One away, we check in now with John Keating. Just a few moments ago, Mario, all the celebrities in attendance for the softball game saying, take me out to the ball game. And in a continuance of a running gag, pay tribute to one of the Tigers' coaches. Listen closely to the end. <laughs> Gee, 
<laughs> what is that? They called out Gene Lamont. The scoreboard knew it was coming. They got a shot of Gino, and he waved to everybody in attendance at Coffin Stadium. Now, what does Gino have in common with those gentlemen? Does he know one of them? They, uh, they've known each other for a long time. As I mentioned, they were killing Gene Lamont when he used to coach third base down here. But oh. I saw I saw Gene visiting with him pregame. So. They have formed a unique relationship. So I that's think. usually where they sit right there when they come out. Exactly. Ah. All right, John, thanks. Okay. There's a strike called on Alcides Escobar. Runner in second and one out. G's well, been in contact with the bullpen. Green gave up the leadoff single. Each ball club with six hits. Royals trying to scratch home an insurance run here. Runs at a premium tonight with Ventura and Fulmer squaring off. Here's the 0 1. The only run that Fulmer gave up was the Salvador Perez. Homer in the sixth. Inside, back to monitor. Two balls, one strike. You got Hosmer on deck. Green right now going to have to navigate through the middle of the Royals lineup. If you can get Escobar, you can walk Hosmer, or you can go to uh, and Blaine Hardy if you want to, and depending on who you want to face, Kane, Green, or Low. Checked it outside and the count rolls to three and one. And you can't give him a free pass. This guy never walks. And literally, I think he's got nine walks all year. It's not a lot. No. I think he's got nine all year. Both ball clubs tonight 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Nine walks for him and nearly 300 at bats already. Here's the 3-1. And a strike on the outer edge. Escobar tried to coax a walk there. 94 mile an hour fastball. Full count three and two. on balls and that'll put runners at first and second it'll bring up Hosmer Hosmer hits 353 against right handed pitching this year or at least did coming in and uh, 231 against lefties. Osborne tonight with a walk, otherwise 0 for 2. Two on and one out. Strike called on Hosmer. Got on this matchup. Well, Green and Hosmer, three for eight for Hosmer against the Tigers right hander. Well, Brad obviously feels more comfortable you know, with Green going up against Hosmer in this particular situation instead of Hardy, who's hot and he's in the bullpen. The 0 1. Ground ball, base hit, left field. Cuthbert rounding third. He's going to come around to score. Hosmer goes the other way. It's an RBI single, and the Royals lead 2 0. Fourth 
42nd RBI of the year and that's going to be it now for Green. Big run there for KC. They're up two now with runners at first and second. Still only one out. Maybe not. Let's see. Does Brad take the baseball? Yes, he will. He will make the signal to the pen. Mark Lowe will be coming in. And Hosmer has been their best RBI man all season long. Gets a fastball top of the zone, fading away from him, and beats the shift. Tigers had him overshifted in the infield. So it's a pitching change here in KC. 2 0 Royals will be back. Oakmont Country Club continues tomorrow as they finish second round play starting at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on FS1, followed by regular third round coverage on Fox, or you can watch it all live on Fox Sports Go. Well, the Tigers are down 2 0 now as we play here in the bottom of the seventh. And Brad Ausma selected to have. Green pitch to Hosmer instead of bringing in the lefty Hardy. And now with Kane up there, here's Mark Lowe. And one of the things that Hosmer has done consistently against Tigers pitching, he has worn them out basically since he's come to the big leagues. He is now hit in 31 of his last 34 against the Tigers. With lots of extra base damage. So Lowe now will face Lorenzo Kane, who is 0 for 3. Two on, one out. Low looking for the ground ball. We told you earlier that Kane will bounce into a few double plays. He's already bounced into one here tonight. Checked it low, 1 0. Oh. They will appeal. He did not go around. On the year, Lorenzo Kane has bounced into eight double plays, which leads their team. Well, two for two against Low. Here's the 1 0. Grounded foul down the third baseline. One ball, one strike on Lorenzo Kane, who is now 2 for 7 in the series. Kane's been on base in 13 straight against the Tigers, although he's not reached tonight. Low would like to keep it that way. Here's the 1 1 pitch. High pop up, first base side. Cabrera coming over to make the catch, and Kane is out, two gone. That'll bring up Salvador Perez.
Perez homered with two outs in the sixth inning off Michael Fulmer, which brought his scoreless streak to a stop at 33 and a third. He went on to walk the next two batters after that. You think he was shook up a little bit after that? Might have been. He walked Morales and Orlando, and then they had to bring Green on to strike out Eidner. Although when you watch Fulmer pitch, he very rarely looks shook up. Here's Perez. Ball one. It's a good point. The home run that Perez hit was his 12th. He has now hit safely in nine consecutive games. for two against low career. Ooh, we held it there didn't get the call. Two and oh. Two runs on seven hits for the Royals no run six hits for the Tigers. Salvador has not been very good as far as the batting average is concerned in these situations. And then two outs, runners in scoring position. He's got himself at a 2 0 count here. And he looks at a strike in the outer edge. Did he signal strike? The scoreboard says 3 0. I thought he signaled a strike. It looked like he did. Two balls, one strike. And Perez swings and misses. Two and two, the count. It's a good breaking ball here thrown by Lowe. You got to keep it down against Salvador. He's got 12 home runs this year. At 21 last year. Escobar in second, Hosmer at first. A run in for the Royals. They lead 2 0. Way outside, and the count fills now 3 and 2. There's Morales waiting on deck. The Royals will start the runners here with two outs. Needs to make a pitch. We'll keep this at two. Soft line drive, right center field, going to get down. A base hit. One run will score. Here comes Hosmer rounding third. He will score. It's a double for Salvador Perez. Salvador Perez has driven in three of the four Kansas City runs this evening. That wasn't a horrible pitch by Lowe, but a really nice uh, piece of hitting by Perez, who went to the bottom of the strike zone and hit that ball in the right center field for a sliding double. It's not a horrible pitch. It's really not. But a beautiful piece of hitting by Salvador. Every single pitch that Lowe had thrown him was away from him. So Salvador had no fear of the inside pitch and basically went out and hit a pitcher's pitch. Two out, two run double by Perez, which gives him three RBIs on the night, and it's now 4 0 KC. Here's Kenry's Morales. Takes ball one. Three of the four runs scored tonight against Tigers pitching after two were out. It's been a big week for Perez. He homered Tuesday and Wednesday. He's homered tonight. He's also doubled in a couple of runs. He really has been showing out. Here's the 1 0. 2 0 the count. Dangerous count. For Mark Lowe to be working in. He had fallen behind Salvador Perez, two balls, no strikes in his at bat. It's usually hard contact. 
in 2 0 counts. Ball usually hit extremely hard somewhere. All three of the runs here in the seventh are charged to Shane Green. Now the 2 0. 3 0. Morelos on base three times already tonight. Single two walks. You have to make a good pitch. Because Morales, he might just have the green light. He'll take ball four, and he is on base for the fourth time tonight. That'll put two men on. That is four walks by Tigers pitching in the last two innings. Now Paulo Orlando. And just about every last one of Orlando's at bats in the first two games of the series has been swinging at the first pitch. Pretty good night tonight for Orlando, double in a walk, batting 338 this season. A run in the sixth inning and three here in the seventh for the Royals. Orlando swings and misses. He's wearing the number 16 that Billy Butler used to wear here in KC. Big bad Billy Butler. Not to mention another former Royal that was pretty good. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. Bo knows. Some kind of freak athlete, wasn't he? He sure was, man. I mean, that injury he sustained in football obviously started to uh, slow his career down. But before that, man, he was he was special. Shane Green allowed the single, the walk, and the base hit to score one, and then a double by Perez off Mark Lowe makes it a three run inning. Here's the 0 1. Strike called in Orlando. All he could do is throw his hands up. Will Little's been calling the ball up there all day long. He's been consistent with this strike at the top of the strike zone all night. Same pitch. He's called it a strike all night long. Oh, and two. Drill to center field. That's going to loop in there for a base hit. Another run will score. Orlando with an 0-2 single to center, and now it's five to nothing. That's a good at bat there by Orlando, who was visibly upset with the strike call of Will Little, and he still has words for Will Little. And he got himself an 0-2 fastball, and he was able to muscle it in the center field for another two-out run for the Kansas City Royals and another hit and for Orlando. Just got enough of the bat on it to loop it into center. That scored Perez with ease. A four run seventh. Orlando's second hit of the night. Then here's the ninth man to bat here in the seventh, Brett Eibner. Eibner looks at a strike 0 and 1. And Eibner started to get a steady diet of uh, breaking balls in this contest. He's punched out three times in the game. Good fastball hitter, but uh, the league will start to throw him a lot more breaking balls until he shows he can hit it. And tonight he has not been up to the task. Low since entering the game is given up a double a walk a single he did retire Kane of the pop up. Here's the 0 1. 
that's sailed low and away. One ball and one strike on Eigner. Five nothing KC. Neither team had scored a run until the Royals got one in the bottom of the sixth in the Perez home run. The only run that Fulmer allowed tonight. Two and one. Morales at second and Orlando at first. Here's the two one bouncing ball to short. Iglesias goes the short way. They'll get the force. Nine men in the plate in the inning though and a big inning for the Royals. They've opened it up to a five nothing lead Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. Right now, we got a couple of guys we're going to uh, key in on. Clayton Kershaw and Jake Arrieta, but Kershaw's just been on a different plane. He really has been, man. There are so many good choices for uh, who will start the National League All Star game this year in San Diego. I don't know who they're going to choose. There's a lot, of cho a lot of good pitchers in the National League, though. I mean, Jake Arrieta has an ERA of 174, and he's not even the best pitcher statistically in the National League. John Lester has a 189 earned run average. His teammate, John Lester, has won a lot of games as well. Bumgarner has a 191 ERA. And Johnny Cueto's also having a good year. Yeah, 10 and 1 for Cueto. Herrera going back out there, got the final two outs of the seventh. And now Gerard Dyson will take over in left field for Eibner. It'll be Romine, Kinsler, and Iglesias here in the Tigers eighth down five to nothing. Chicago Cubs, Mario, have four of their starters in the top ten in ERA. They're four, four. starters. Well, Lackey has a 266. He is ninth in the American League in earn run average. And that's why the Cubs came in 44 and 20. <laughs> Rolling. We've got a nine and a half game lead. Arietta shoot threw a shutout today. Romine takes the ball low. Romine in the ball game a single and a strikeout. Those two at bats against Giordano Ventura, the two starters tonight, did not disappoint. Both Ventura and Fulmer were really good. 1 1 pitch, a bouncing ball right side. Hosmer has it. Shovel toss and got him by a step. One away. What a game summary here tonight. Perez having a big night three RBIs including a homer the uh, Royals with that four run seventh inning what would you think about the starters tonight uh, starters were outstanding yeah, Ventura was tremendous five strikeouts he did not walk a batter 
And Michael Former, of course, he came in with a, a streak that which got to 33 and a third. He walked four in the game, so he didn't have that great command uh, this evening. And it was last night the Tigers got to the Kansas City Royals bullpen for seven runs. Tonight, uh, it's Kansas City getting to Detroit's bullpen. They've scored four runs against Tigers' pen. Top of the order now. Here is Ian Kinsler. Fastball at 98, right at the knees, 0 and 1. And Ventura came in having some control issues on the season and did not walk one batter. Ground ball, third base side, foul. 0 2 on Kinsler. The Tigers have two more games here at KC, then they're back home. Tigers when they go on their next road trip it'll be another three city tour and that'll butt up against the all star break. High fly ball shallow right field Orlando says I will take it and he does two outs. Well Friday June 24 the Tigers host the Indians at 7 10 p.m. fans are invited to stay after the game a fireworks spectacular. If you'd like tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or check it out online at tigers.com. Two gone now for Iglesias. Iggy's over three with that hitting streak on the line. A bender drops in for a strike. And a tough customer here to try to get a hit off of as well. Kelvin Herrera. He's got three above average pitches. Blazing fastball, real nice breaking ball, and a good change up. There's that change piece at 88 miles an hour. 0 oh 2 on Iglesias. Should he reach Cabrera waiting on deck? The 0 2. Because of that hitting streak, Iglesias has brought his average up from the low 200s to 254 coming in tonight. He's at 250 right now. He gained about 40 points. One good hot streak can do it for you. Lane Hardy in the Tigers' pen. Ground ball left side. It's fielded there by Cuthbert. His throw is in time. And it's going to be a 1 2 3 8.
uh, Toronto Blue Jays placed on the 15 day disabled list. It looks like Tim Lincecum's back in the big league. There was a lot of teams that went out to take a peek at uh, Lincecum when he was trying out in Arizona, but he wanted to stay on the West Coast. Saw the numbers on CC Sabathia. He's kind of reinvented himself. He's been really good. Good against the Tigers this year. Tigers have not scored a run against uh, Sabathia in two starts. Bottom of the eighth inning, and Blaine Hardy is coming out of the Tigers bullpen. Good numbers for Blaine, 1.59 ERA, and pitching in his 12th game. And Blaine wants property of the Kansas City Royals. Cuthbert leading it off, had a single to start off the last inning, and eventually scored a run. Going to be a tough play, and Castellanos can make it. Tried to go bare hand route, but couldn't field it. A base hit for Cuthbert. Tomorrow, Major League Baseball returns with an interleague showdown you can see only on FS1 when the Rangers take on the Cardinals at 4 Eastern. Then it's baseball night in America with the American League Central battle between your Tigers and these Royals. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox station, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Here is Whit Merrifield now with the leadoff man on. Ball one high. Merrifield had a single in the third, is now hit safely in six in a row for the Royals. That's in there, a strike called, 1-1. One, one. Tigers out of the bullpen tonight have gone with Shane Green, Mark Lowe, and now Hardy. Right back up the middle and in the center field out of the reach of Kinsler. And the Royals have the first two men on here in the eighth. Fans, don't forget to fill out your 2016 insurance Major League Baseball All-Star Game ballot now at Tigers.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Vote up to 35 times. Vote today, vote tomorrow. Go to tigers.com slash vote. Here's Escobar now with two on, nobody out. But outside 1 0. Wade Davis swarming up in the Royals bullpen. And Wade must need some work. Ground ball, fair ball, diving stop. Castellanos, his throw in time for the out. What a great play by Castellanos. Well, that saved a couple of runs. He just continues to shine at third base. A couple of steps and a dive, and then Escobar, the shortstop for the Kansas City Royals, has good speed. And but Nick able to get up and throw him out at first base. Real nice play by Cassianos. Took very little time at getting up to his feet to make the accurate throw back across the diamond. So the infield coming in now for the Tigers. Here is Eric Hosmer. Second and third, one out. And Hosmer steps away from ball one. And left handers, for the most part, they don't bother Eric Hosmer. He homered in the game just a few days ago twice against Chris Sale of the Chicago White Sox. And that just does not happen very often. He's had five home runs against lefties this year. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Hosmer rips one to center field. That's a base hit. One run scores. Romine up with it. His throw to the plate is going to be off target. A two run single for Eric Hosmer. He can just play. He's a good player. And before it's all said and done, Hosmer might find himself in the MVP conversation in the American League. Drawn in infield, left handed pitcher, no problem for Hosmer. 
He has now driven in three today. Seven nothing Royals have extended the lead. They've scored all seven in the last three innings. Six of the seven runs they've scored on the Tigers bullpen tonight. Here's Lorenzo Kane. Well, this thing was a pitching duel and a one nothing game after six and got away quickly. Now more action in the Royals bullpen. Dylan G has joined Wade Davis. Wade Davis is down there acting like he's having a tough time getting loose in the bullpen. There's a looping single to right field and Lorenzo Kane has a hit. Kansas City Royals bats have really woken up in the last two frames. They have 13 hits now. Still only one out. Salvador Perez the hitter he's already had a big night solo home run and a two run double scored two runs and he's catching a shutout Hardy so one pitch big swing there no balls and two strikes two run double and a solo homer for Perez this evening. Cleveland Indians won their game tonight against the White Sox three to two so Kansas City needs a win to stay in first place with Cleveland. Chopper to third it's a foul ball. Tigers came in only a game and a half back of the Cleveland Indians before play today. So another a tight division. With two on Perez. With a whole lot of baseball to be played. Yeah, we kind of figured it would be a tight division all season, even when the Tigers were struggling early in the month of April and into May. The 0 2. Soft line drive. Kinsler makes the play. Two gone. Here's the upcoming matchup presented by Gordon Chevrolet. Edinson Volquez will go tomorrow for KC and at Boyd for the Tigers. And Volquez six and six. And this year for Kansas City with an ERA just a shade under four. And Boyd looking for his first win. Here's Kendrys Morales. Kendrys Morales has a hit in the game and he's been walked three times. Every Royal starter with the exception of Escobar and Eigner with at least one hit tonight. 13 total for the Royals. Driven deep in the air to left field. Back to the corner it goes and it is gone. Henry's Morales laid into that one. His eighth home run of the year. That's what uh, Kendry's Morales did a lot of last year, and he did a lot of that against Tigers pitching. He had a three homer game against Tigers pitching. And the Royals have absolutely busted this one wide open. Boy, did they. That's a fastball that's just right down the middle and look at the hips open up for Morales and he lifted and separated. A clean lift too. 10 nothing KC it's a five run eighth inning. This was a one to nothing game going into the sixth inning. Going into the seventh seventh inning. That's grounded foul. Yeah the uh, Royals got one in the bottom of the six. Yeah. Remember the Tigers had a couple of runners on a couple of errors in that seventh inning by the Royals looking like they might tie it up. Great play by Merrifield the second baseman. 
four hundred thirteen feet on that pitch that home run. Oh and two and don't forget that ball that went to the screen. Yeah picture came halfway down the line. Funny how just think you can change on a dime in this game and they certainly did. Nine of their ten runs in the last two innings. Here was that Victor play here. Runner on third, wild pitch by Herrera. And Victor comes halfway down the line. He read it perfectly, and then he stopped and retrieved back to third. Swing and a miss, and then we'll finally end the inning. They send eight men to the plate and score five times. We go to the ninth. All right, Mick, thanks. Well, the Tigers got into the Royals' bullpen last night, and it worked out well for them. The Royals returned to the favorite tonight. We'll ask Brad Ausmus about that. We'll also talk about the end of an amazing streak for the kid, Michael Fulmer. Tigers Live postgame coming up with uh, Mickey York and Craig Monroe in our Call Sam Studios. I'll be in the clubhouse. Mario and Rod will make an appearance as well right after our game here at Kauffman Stadium. Guys, up to you. All right, John, thank you. Uh, in the meantime, the Tigers coming up here in the ninth inning down 10 to nothing, and they'll face a new right-hander. It'll be Dylan G. And Wade Davis was up in their bullpen, but after they scored more runs here in the uh, bottom half of the eighth inning, they go to Dylan G. And pitching in his 13th game, a 1-5-1 whip. 39 strikeouts for G, though. He's only walked 15. First pitch is hammered toward left field. That ball is hit deep, and that ball is going to go out of here. It's a home run. There goes the shutout. Second home run of the series for Miguel Cabrera, his 14th on the year. Seventh hit of the game for the Tigers. They finally get a run here in the ninth, down 10 to 1. And G tried to get ahead of McGill with a little two seam fastball in the low 90s, and McGill hit an absolute frozen rope into the drink. Looks like Avilas will get in at bat here for Victor Martinez. Tigers get on the board. They will not be shut out tonight. Here is Avilas batting. And he's looking to strike 0 and 1. Dylan G, the former New York Mets. 
Bouncing ball slowly towards second. Cologne has entered the ball game and he'll throw him out. Christian Cologne from Merrifield, who has moved to left field. As the uh, Royals get some of their starters out, Kane is out of the ball game. Now Dyson moving to center. One out, nobody on. Here is Castellanos. Nick takes ball one. Two and zero on Castellanos. Single in three at bats plus a great defensive play at third base. Here's the 2 0 pitch outside three balls no strikes. That's in there a strike called. Spent six years in the rotation for the Mets. Here's the 3 1 pitch. Bouncer back up the middle into center at base hit. Here is the 1 800 call Sam call of the game. Michael Fulmer uh, got the start tonight for the Tigers and he was good. He only gave up one run in the game, which is a home run. And before giving up that home run, his stuff was absolutely lethal. The fastball got up to 98 miles an hour. His slider was unhittable. He threw a few change ups, but by and large, kept the ball out of the middle of the plate, and there were some awkward looking swings against the rookie right hander. He continues to impress. Upton takes ball one. And people not uh, watching the game tonight that knew that Fulmer was pitching, they're probably looking at the score and saying, he got lit up tonight, yeah. but that is not the case. Exactly. Just one run in six innings. The bullpen has given up most of the uh, damage tonight. Meanwhile, G can't throw a strike. 2 0. Oh. He gave up the home run to Cabrera. Well, J. Up should get a good swing right here. In ninth inning, you know you're going to get a fastball. Oh, my goodness. It's a give me strike there. The 2 1. 2 2. Upton tonight has struck out twice. He also reached on an air by Cuthbert at third base. That'll bounce in. 3 and 2. Here are the changes the Royals made. Dyson now in center. Merrifield moves to left. Cologne at second. And Drew Butera is the catcher now as Salvador Perez is done for the night. 3 2 pitch is swung on and belted in the air to left field. That ball is hit deep. Merrifield looks up and it is gone. Justin Upton goes deep. A two run shot. And Dylan G getting tattooed here. The last couple of nights, the ball has been flying out of Kauffman Stadium. Tigers hit six home runs last night, two more tonight. That's a little breaking ball, a little cut fastball that Jay up knew. And as soon as it touched his bat, his bat, it was going to go a long way. I think he hit that over the fountains. They just kept going. Here's Moya. He'll drive one in the air to center field. It's going to be playable for Dyson. Here's the second out of the inning. And it's all up to McCann. Royal 
Bills trying to get to 36 and 31. The Tigers would drop to 34 and 33. McCann tonight is 0 for 3. He had a really good bat against Herrera in the seventh inning with runners at first and third. Tiger fans had their rally visors on. They drop it for a strike 1 1. 37,746 in attendance tonight. And they're on their feet. And they're waiting for the fireworks, but they saw some fireworks during the game, too. Drill to center field, a base hit. No quit the Tigers here in the ninth inning. So the Tigers now have gone to double digits in the hit column. It's not been a very good mop up inning for Dylan G. Came in in a 10 0 ball game. It's 10 to 3 now. The single by McCann keeps it going. Here's Romine. Swing and a miss, so and one. G had a couple of really good years as a starter for the Mets. No balls and two strikes. Won 13 games for the Mets in 2011. Tough to crack that Mets rotation these days. Uh, no question. Here's the 0-2. Way high, one and two. You wonder if uh, the Tigers never made that trade for Fulmer if he would have gotten an opportunity this year. Maybe not this year, but he sure would have gotten one soon because this stuff is too good. The one-two is lifted back out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Boy, tomorrow night in game three, then they wrap up this series on Sunday. Yeah, Dylan G about to throw his 24th pitch of this frame. Swing and a miss, and that finally ended. Tigers put up three runs on a couple of homers in the ninth, but in the end, all Royals late in this game, and they beat the Tigers by a score of 10 to 3 here tonight. We'll be back to KC.